you have your Bibles, you don't have to turn to the book of Acts. I love, I love the book of Acts. And I, I was really planning to press on this morning in the middle of the rain. But uh, even in our prayer time this morning, I was just made very aware that the storm is at the front of our mind. Folks are thinking about the storm. It's, it's not just something that's happening out there. It's something that's gotten close to us, and, and we feel that. It's, it's one of those life events that consumes us. Some of us have been watching nonstop coverage on the web channel. Got to get a witness. The last minute, I changed my mind and decided to title the message Storm Theology. And I'll just say to you here this morning that I'm standing up here in front of you, but in my mind, I'm just sitting on a love seat with my feet crossed. And we're having a conversation. Do you watch the TV and see the storm and ask these questions? Does God cause the storms? Did God create storms? Does God direct the paths of the storms? Or does God just know about the storms? I have five thoughts this morning. Actually, there are five questions and five passages of scriptures. We might be out of here at 1030. No amens on that. <laughs> Thought number one, question number one. Do you ever feel like this? This passage is from, is from Job chapter 30. Remember Job's life. Remember Job found himself buried in the storm. Do you ever feel like this? <laughs> God, I cry out to you for help, but you don't answer me. When I stand up, you merely look at me. You have turned against me with cruelty. You harass me with your strong hand. You lift me up on the wind. And make me ride it. You scatter me in the storm. Yes, I know that you will lead me to death. The place appointed for all who live. Thought number one, do you ever feel like this? Here's the application of this thought. The Bible is keenly aware of the human condition. You know, sometimes Scripture gets a bad rap for just being a bunch of pious platitudes. Just... Brandon, just bring it all to the table. Just bring it all to the table. Just let go and let God. Just trust God and everything will be all right. And we believe the truth that is behind those things. But I just want to suggest to you that when we consider the storms of life, maybe the one that's happening to folks right now in Wilmington, North Carolina, that continues to happen while the eye of the storm continues to move, the water keeps coming in on Wilmington, the Bible is keenly aware of the human condition. Isn't there great comfort in that, great hope in that? It's not just a bunch of disconnected, naive, pious platitudes. Uh, the Bible is keenly aware of the human condition. Thought number two, question number two, have you ever experienced this? This is kind of the opposite of what Job was experiencing. This is from Psalm, this is, there's 19 verses, I'm going to read them all. I love you, Lord. You ever get to that? I love you, Lord. My strength. The Lord, you see, is my rock and my fortress. He's my deliverer and my God. My mountain where I go to seek refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold. I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I was saved. Have you ever experienced this? The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. This is David writing. Sometimes we don't necessarily feel like the ropes of death are wrapped around us, but sometimes we feel like we're in the throes of death. The ropes of Sheol or of the death or of the grave entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. I called to the Lord in my distress. I cried to God for my help. From His temple He heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. We can carry that one home with us, can we? Can we? On Monday morning. Sometimes I feel like Job, I called and you just didn't answer. 
But I know the truth that when I called to Him, my words came up to Him and He heard my cries. Verse 7, the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of the mountain trembled. They shook because He burned with anger. Smoke rose from His nostrils and consuming fire came from His mouth. Coals were set ablaze by it. God, the, the psalmist David has a picture of God being angry. He parted the heavens and He came down in a dark cloud beneath His feet. He rode on a cherub and flew soaring on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place. Dark storm clouds his canopy around him. From the radiance of his presence, his cloud swept on, onward with hail and blazing coals. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High projected his voice. He shot his arrows and scattered them. He hurled lightning bolts and routed them. The psalmist David is talking about how God got mad and came to his aid in the face of David's enemies. The depths of the sea became visible. The foundations of the world were exposed. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of, your, of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from heaven and he took a hold of me. You carry that one with you on Monday morning, can't you? He pulled me out of deep waters. Verse 17. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my distress, but the Lord was my support. And then verse 19. He brought me out to a spacious place, he rescued me because He delighted in me. He rescued me because He delighted in me. Here's the application. God is fighting for you because He delights. You know, I've said several times, a lot of times in my Christian experience over these years, I didn't necessarily have that view of God. I kind of thought maybe that God was mad at me. And He was angry at me and He was waiting for me to mess up. And when I messed up, He was playing whack-a-mole. When I messed up here, He'd whack me. And I'd mess up over here, He'd whack me. But you know what? God is fighting for me because He delights in me. Hope has often said, and quoted somebody else, that if God had a refrigerator, my picture would be on it. That's a good thought. God is fighting for you because He delights in you. Question number three. I gotta slow down or we are going down here too. <laughs> I'll read slow. <laughs> Question number three. Have you ever observed this? Have you ever seen this happen from Proverbs chapter one? This is wisdom talking. Verses 20 through 31. Wisdom calls out in the streets. She raises her voice in the public squares. She cries out above the commotion. She speaks at the entrance of the city gates. Here's what wisdom says. Here's the voice that wisdom is crying out to the world. Hey, how long, foolish ones, will you love ignorance? How long will you mockers enjoy mocking and you fools hate knowledge? Wisdom says, look, folks. If you respond to my warning, then I will pour out my spirit on you and I'll teach you my words. Since I called out to you and asked you to listen to my words and you refused, I extended my hand and nobody paid any attention to me, wisdom says. Since you neglected my counsel and did not accept my correction, I, in turn, will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you. When terror strikes you like a storm. And your calamity comes like a whirlwind. 
when trouble and distress overcome you. Then they will call me, but I won't answer. They will search for me, but they will not find me. Why? Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were not interested in my counsel, and they rejected all of my correction. And so, verse 31, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be glutted with their own schemes. Here's the application of that. While God delights in those who delight in Him, that was the previous principle, His heavy hand is on those who He you know, I, I, I believe that God is a great God of grace and a God of love and a God of mercy and a God of hope. But you know what? Well, he's a holy God too. And He has a really high righteous standard. And, and He loves those who reach out and, and seek Him with all their heart. He's not playing whack-a-mole with them. He's not angry with them. He delights in them. Those who seek Him, He delights in them. But those who reject Him, we will often find God's heavy hand on them. While God delights in those who delight in Him, His heavy hand is on those who ignore Him. Here's thought number four, question number four. Boy, don't you love this passage of Scripture? The question is, do you have storm insurance? Remember this story from Matthew chapter 6? Don't collect for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal and when, where water comes and destroys. Don't lay up for yourselves treasures there on earth. Verse 20, but instead collect for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break Verse 21, because where your treasure is, that's where your heart's at as well. Here's the, here's the application. Make sure you are investing in non-perishable treasures. You know, it's sobering to consider that for many people today, perhaps their life's treasures are covered today by water from hurricanes. Make sure you are investing in non-perishable treasures. It's a challenge to me in my life. Man, we have stuff coming out of our ears, don't we? We have material possessions and material possessions and material possessions. Make sure you're investing in non-perishable treasures. Thought number five, question number five. During the storm, are you in the boat with Jesus? Matthew chapter 8. As he got into the boat, his disciples followed him into the boat. They were riding in the boat with Jesus. Suddenly, a violent storm arose on the sea so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. I love that. Don't you love that? But he was taking a power nap. If I was with Jesus, I'd probably be right there beside him taking a power nap. I had not too. But then I would wake up. So the disciples came and woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We're going to die. We're in the middle of this storm. We're going to die. The question is, are you in the boat with Jesus? But he said to them, hey, why are you all afraid? Why, 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 are you, why are you fearful? Don't be afraid. Why are you fearful? You have little faith. Then Jesus got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. There was. You know, we've got our little rocks here and we write our names on them. When God answers our prayer, I pick Norm's name up again. Norm's rock was right on top. We talked about him last week. When God, God does those jaw-dropping, all-inspiring things in our lives and we remember them and we're going to write them on rocks and we're going to build a great big pile of rocks of remembrance. Do you imagine that the disciples got out of the boat and put a rock on the side of the boat, a stack of rocks? What's that for? You would not believe it. The storm, the waves were over top of us. The boat was about to rock. And Jesus said... 
Jesus rebuked the sea. You would not believe it. Verse 27. The men jaw dropped. And they asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the sea obey you. And I don't know what storm that you have. Here's the application. Place your trust in the master of the sea. That's all I've got. Will you pray with me? Can I just say to you this morning that man, storms come and storms pass away. Good times come, good times go. Hard times come, hard times go. But what I remind you this morning of the one thing that does not change, that is that the Lord Jesus is the master of the sea. He knows every event that is happening right now in your life. He delights in those who delight in Him. This morning I will just say to you that if you showed up this morning and, and you find yourself not in uh, Hurricane Florence, but maybe in another storm in your life, may I offer to you your hope is in Jesus like the psalm said. I offer to you amazing grace like the psalm said. I offer to you the truth that God delights in those who delight in Him. And I offer to you the truth that if you place your trust to the master of the sea, He can take that storm in your life and He can turn it to calm. I pray for you today. Father, I pray for a person here this morning who finds themselves in the middle of a storm. I ask you by your Spirit right now, Father, that you would pierce that person's heart and they would be made keenly aware of your amazing, sweet, loving, kind, gracious, forgiving grace. Pray, Father, that in this day, as we ride out the effects of this storm in our community, I pray, Father, that you would give us new courage and that you would give us new hope and you would give us new confident expectation in who you are and at your work in our lives. I pray for someone this morning, Father, who needs to hear the truth of your word, that you'll draw them to yourself.